Welcome to Goshen Prepping. Thanks so much for joining us. We always talk about what to stockpile, what to put away, healthy things. Not today. Today we need to get serious and I'm going to go through things you do not want to prep stockpiling items. Well, we end up sometimes stockpiling these anyway, but you really need to think twice about getting these items and putting them in a stockpile in their future. And it comes down to this. The FDA they're a bunch of lying scumbags and they're completely corrupt and based on lobbying funds and don't get me started with that. So they put out certain things, oh, it's okay for you to eat this. Granted, you'll die from eating this, but it's okay. But we need to be smart about our preps and make sure we're eating the things we should to stay healthy. So we're gonna go through a couple website pages. This one is EWG, which stands for Environmental Working Group. It's a great group, by the way. And if we click on who we are for our mission, I need you to read this real quick. Our mission is simple, to empower you with breakthrough research to make informed choices and live a healthy life in a healthy environment. Well said, good job. But this specific article they wrote, their dirty dozen guide to food chemicals, the top 12 to avoid. And there may be some of these you didn't even know about. We'll go through these and I'm gonna talk about more too, so stick with this. Okay, so here they are, nitrates and nitrites, preservatives used in cured meats. They've been linked to stomach cancer, esophageal cancer, and possibly brain and thyroid cancers. So you may certainly want to avoid this one when you see it on your packaging, on your labels. But other companies are kind of smart about this because do you know where they get their nitrates and nitrites from? Celery. So if you see celery powder as an ingredient, that's actually the same thing. On this website, it says there's no evidence that celery powder causes cancer, but it does talk about as far as nitrosamines compounds linked to cancer in animal studies. But the news is becoming very commonplace, by the way, that nitrates are linked to cancer. So you'll see sometimes as the last ingredient, or close to it anyway, a preservative celery powder. That is the, basically the nice form of nitrate. So don't fall for that trick. Potassium bromate, it's a human carcinogen added to flour used in packaged baked goods. So if you do your own baking, just check your flour to make sure it doesn't have it. Propylparaben, it's a preservative used in pastries and some tortillas. Causes developmental and reproductive harm. And I wanna stop for a second and talk about this because when we talk about added chemicals, well beyond the scope of this video, mind you, there's so many of them that cause cancer, so many of them cause this, but the majority of these things cause problems in reproduction. Very interesting how we see that and we see a massive decline in the population growth rates. BHA and BHT, cured meats and other foods. The BHT version is found in cereals and other foods. Both of them are big carcinogens. And again, one of the things we talk about is cured meats. Pepperoni, by the way, doesn't matter what kind of meat you like in your pepperoni, be it pork or beef pepperoni, they almost guarantee to have these ingredients. Almost guaranteed. There's a couple natural ones out there that you can get that don't have it. TBHQ, found in things like Pop-Tarts and other processed food, harms the immune system. And before we continue, are we seeing a trend here? Processed food. Processed foods are the most horrible thing ever. Titanium dioxide, a color additive, it damages your DNA, that's nice. BVO, brominated vegetable oil, it stabilizes citrus flavors in sodas and fruity drinks, causes neurological harm. Oh, PFAS, also called PFAS compounds. It is known as a forever chemical. This one's in food packaging and will leach into the food itself. Cancer, damage to the immune system, reproductive system, and lots and lots of other health harms. This is a huge one. Artificial colors, they are synthetic food dyes, developmental and behavioral difficulties in children. And this is a huge one, by the way, when we have kids coming in from martial arts, a lot of times the parents are like, our kids are going crazy, quick, throw them into martial arts. And as instructors, we have to deal with these incredibly hyperactive kids coming in. I literally have them coming in drinking a soda or a fruity drink right before they come on the mat and start working out. You wanna tell parents, listen, you, you need to fo focus on this, but you know what, the people will do what they wanna do. Artificial sweeteners, we'll talk about this one in just a minute. I like this though, look, has a negative effect on weight control, what? And then heavy metals, all kinds of things, mercury, lead, cadmium, arsenic, slow growth and developmental issues, cancer risk, behavioral and learning difficulties. And it says they get into food through water and soil pollution. That is true, it's not mostly in food specifically, that's good. So if you don't know about these ingredients, even, th even if there's a couple on there you're not really too familiar with, now is the time to do your research and read up on it. But more specifically, the second to last one we looked at was artificial sweeteners. And I wanna focus the rest of this video on that specific topic because, holy cow, the world craves sugar. And as they get heavier and heavier, they crave, well, something that tastes sugary, so they jump right into this artificial sweetener binge. And it is, it's incredibly, incredibly bad for you. I'll link this below. This is a government-based from Cambridge University journal article, Killing Us Sweetly, 
how to take industry out of the FDA. I wanna talk about this for just a second. And look at this for just a moment. For more than a century, the FDA has claimed to protect the public health. However, during that time, it's actually been placing corporate profits above consumer safety. Nowhere in this corruption is more evident than the approval of artificial sweeteners. I love this article. It is so true. Not just artificial sweeteners, but sweeteners too. Do your research on this if you haven't done it already. They have pushed, pushed, pushed for the last few decades, low fat. The reason people are fat is because they eat fat. And that is 100% not true, completely opposite. Sugar makes fat, makes obesity. If you don't believe me, I'm a doctor. This is something I know very well and very specifically. And if you think fat makes you fat, you are blatantly wrong on the subject. Sugars make people fat. But what's happened is over the last few decades, the sugar industry and lobbying and money coming in has changed the FDA's viewpoint. Well, not changed it. They, they steered the FDA's viewpoint and try to make it like fat's bad for you. That's why we see low-fat everything. Low-fat milk, low-fat yogurt, low-fat chips. I mean, you name it. I mean, chips are bad themselves, but they want low-fat and everything. We need fats. And it's interesting. As you see fats decreasing in our diet, we're seeing obesity going up because people eat sugars and diseases affected by having low-fat diets, like, for example, Alzheimer's. Don't you think there's a reason why Alzheimer's in the last few decades has skyrocketed? It's because of this low-fat nonsense. So the FDA has been saying sugar's fine, and now as people are catching on, they're saying, oh, you know what? Artificial sweeteners. Let's jump down that path. From Dr. Axe, I love this guy. I love this website. The five worst artificial sweeteners, and, well, he wants to give you a healthy alternative as well. I'll link this too in case you want to look that up. Common artificial sweeteners, he lists tons of them. Aspartame, Equal, Neotame, NutraSweet. The list goes on and on. Saccharin, I think most people know about saccharin. Splenda, Sorbitol, we'll talk about that one in a minute, Sucralose, Xylitol, Sweet and Low. The list goes on and on, doesn't it? Where they hide in food, <laughs> you name it. It's in everything. So let's take a look at them. Number one, aspartame. Equal NutraSweet, it's in more than 6,000 foods and over 500 prescription drugs and over-the-counter medications. That's interesting, isn't it? Common side effects, headaches, migraines, mood disorders, dizziness, episodes of mania. Not to mention, it's been linked to brain demyelinization and leaving lesions in the brain. It eats your brain away. This is horrible stuff and it's in everything. And people think, oh look, the sugar content's low. Have some aspartame. It's far worse than eating the sugar sometimes. Number two, sucralose, which is Splenda. It's been linked to leukemia. In human and rodent studies, it affects glucose, insulin, and glucagon-like peptide one levels. And this is very interesting because people who are like diabetic have to regulate their insulin levels. And they think, oh, if I have something like aspartame or sucralose, it's gonna be fine because it's not gonna spike my insulin. That's not true at all. They actually will spike your insulin just as much as actually eating sugar. These are not a good alternative. These are horrible. Number three, acylfame K, or simply ACE, sweet and safe. Yeah, <laughs> safe, that's it, yeah, right. Actually releases chlorine in the bloodstream, causes nausea, mood problems, and some types of cancer, impaired liver and kidney functions, problems with eyesight, even linked to autism. The human body cannot break it down because it's believed to negatively affect the metabolism. And if you just take the time to read ingredients, you'll often find asphalfame K with aspartame both on the same label. Saccharin, this is the big one that came out in the 70s, and I think most people know about this, but it's still around. It's found in children's medications, chewable aspirin, cough syrup, over-the-counter medications, leads to serious health conditions, including cancer, but also nausea, digestive upset, tachycardia, and some types of cancer. And number five, xylitol. We'll talk about this one more in just a second, but look, erythritol, maldotol, mannitol, sorbitol, they're just sugar alcohols. Don't think of it as like drinking alcohol. It's not the same thing. And like WebMD states that, you know, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, you might want to actually avoid xylitol, but there's actually a lot of information coming out about it now. And this is actually one of the biggest uh, debates that we have when it comes to artificial sweeteners. In addition, we have bloating, gas, cramping, and diarrhea. And that is for sure. That's, there's no negotiating in that one. It definitely causes that because they call this the diabetic sweetener because it does not affect insulin and everything. And it used to be back in the day before artif artificial sweeteners were in everyone, you could actually go down like the candy aisle at the store and they would actually have very specific ones that would actually be sweetened with these sugar alcohols instead of regular sugar, or at least in combination. And if you made the mistake of eating too many of them, you go binge eating like certain chocolates that have it, you're going to be so bloated feel like you want to throw up and be cramped up in your intestinal system. So that used to be the biggest complaint about this, but there's been a lot of news coming out saying, no, it actually is far worse. And is it? 
And our friend, Dr. Axe looks at this too. Is it the healthy sweetener, the real deal? Now, some things about it you need to know. It is genetically modified foods, which scares the daylights out of me. And often GMOs have connections like fertility. There it is again, immune problems, accelerated aging, faulty insulin regulation, and changes in major organs, such as like the GI tract. Again, all kinds of uh, bloating and problems in there too. Now, this is certainly where we need to read our ingredients. It's not a sweet sugar. So it's often combined with other artificial sweeteners like aspartame. And because of that can lead to anxiety, memory loss, fibromyalgia, weight gain, fatigue, and more. And we also talked about it before, GI problems, makes you feel bloated, that type of stuff. Number four says may trigger allergic reactions, but honestly, that can pretty much be any food. Number five, we need to look at linked to cardiovascular issues. And that's where we're gonna end with the article. I'll talk about this. They're finding that people who take a lot of erythritol have a higher risk of having cardiovascular problems. And it certainly may be true. That seems to be what we're looking at. We're not looking at double blind studies. We're simply looking at you know research, asking people who are having heart, cardiovascular problems what their diet is like. And there seems to be a trend with people who eat a lot of erythritol and having cardiovascular issues. For me and my family, we will have a little bit of erythritol sometimes. And I find there are some doctors who said all this hype that's saying it's really bad for you. It's only based on one study one little study, and it was, it was greatly exaggerated on that study. So I guess the, the jury's out on that. For me and my family, if we want something sugary, we'll often have like stevia or monk fruit. And I mean, I'm not gonna say they're not gonna find problems with those in the future too. They might, they very well might. But they are natural sugars. They come from natural sources. They're not some of these different synthetic monstrosities made in a lab. And for the fact that, I mean, monk fruit, by the way, is actually banned in the United Kingdom. And why is it banned? Uh, all the research shows nobody knows really why they banned it, probably because they want people fat. Um, but when we look at stevia, there's actually been connections with stevia affecting like low birth weight and causing allergic reactions too. But again, you can have allergic reactions with anything. I'm going to talk more about ingredients. We'll talk more about things you may want to avoid as far as stockpiling goes. And I'm sure you probably know some ingredients too. Put them in the comments below because I truly, I firmly believe, and I bet many of you agree with me, that the FDA is not out for our best interest. And it's not simply corporate dollars being thrown at them. The government doesn't care about you and me. They truly, in my opinion, want us all to die off. That's what I think anyway, you know, maybe a little crazy, but I think that's what's going on. Because if you start looking at some of the research that they put out, trying to push their agenda, that seems to be going in that direction. All right. So all we can do is stockpile and do the best we can do. I always recommend anyway, whole foods. If you can make your own foods at home, whole foods, no matter what kind of diet you might be on, get away from preservatives, get away from sweeteners, all that stuff. It's so bad for you. Thanks so much for watching.